Hello viewers, in this video we are going to learn determination of trade secret status and what are the key factors. Let's get on to the video. 1939 Restatements of Torts which means a wrongful act or an infringement of a right lists six factors to be considered in determining whether information qualifies as a trade secret. Courts routinely examine these factors to determine whether a company's information constitutes a trade secret. Which means in 1939, there is a Restatements of Torts Act. As per that, there were six key factors which determines the status of a trade secret. Which means whether the information can be considered as a trade secret or not. So, how do they determine it? On the basis of six factors. Let us look into the six factors and uh, what are they going to say? The number one, the extent to which the information is known outside the company. Although information may be known to other outside the company and still qualify as a trade secret, the greater the number of people who know the information, the less likely it to qualify as a trade secret. So first and foremost, what court is going to consider is whatever the information they are claiming as a trade secret, how many people outside the company, general people know about this trade secret. If anybody knows it, then it's very less likely to consider as a trade secret. So. What is the first one? The first one is they are going to test how many people outside the company know the trade secret. Now let's move on to the second one. The extent to which the information is known within the company. Although an employer or company is permitted to disclose confidential information to those with demonstrated need to know the information. If the information is widely known within the company, especially among those who have no business need to know the information, it may not qualify as a trade secret. And after the first factor, the second factor is what court is going to consider how many people within the company knows the trade secret of the company. Only there are certain people, limited people will have the access to the trade secrets because they need to demonstrate it. There are several other departments which do not require to know the trade secret in order to do their operations in the company. For example, only the manufacturing unit of cars brand should know about the automation procedure and how they manufacture them. But however, the person who is sitting at the gate, who issues the gate passes, shouldn't be knowing that. Or else if you take KFC, the person who is preparing KFC chicken should know the trade secret of the KFC. Not the person who is doing billing. So, with, even within the company, if inappropriate people knowing the trade secret, then the trade secret cannot be contained. So it is not going to be considered as a trade secret. Now let us move on to the other factor. The extent of the measure taken by the company to maintain the secrecy of the information. One claiming trade secret protection must be reasonable precautions to protect the information. Courts are unlikely, unlikely to protect information a company has not bothered to protect. A company is obligated to undertake extreme efforts to protect information, but reasonable precautions are required. Some experts predict that courts will likely require advanced security measures to protect trade secrets transmitted via email including encryption and protocols to ensure confidentiality. So this factor speaks about whatever the protection measurements taken by the company to protect 
their trade secret it is really obvious that if a company is not keeping any efforts to protect the trade secret courts very unlikely to protect them and what kind of efforts they have kept in to protect the trade secret also considered very deeply for example the world's costliest brand coca cola protects their formula in a kind of locker it's a very huge locker nobody have access to in the same way all the companies should protect what exactly really matter for them because their company's existence and survival completely depends upon the trade secret so they need to protect it and they need to keep visible efforts in order to protect the trade secrets the extent of the value of the information to the company and its competitors if the information has little value either to its owner or to the owners competitors it is likely to qualify as trade secret conversely information that is valuable to company such as the recipe for its key menu product and that would be of great value to the company competitors is most likely to be protectable trade secret so whatever the trade secret is claimed as leaked court is going to consider how much value that particular information is to the company whether are they really valuing it or the leaked information really tampering their reputation and the financial situation all these things will be considered before they consider the trade secret as valuable to the company next one the extent of expenditure of time effort and money by the company in developing the information the greater the amount of time effort and money the company has expended developing or acquiring the information the more likely it to be held to be a protectable trade secret for there are certain companies in order to produce valuable products their research and development departments work for years to get on to a certain extent for example you know whenever you take a, any car brand take 20 years ago what kind of car brand they have what are the features today compare those cars with present cars what is the difference how do you think that happens so how much time how much money is invested in order to get that design and also even if you look into old's mcdonald's and today's mcdonald's menus what is the difference how much time each and every time the research and development departments are going to spend in order to develop certain products so this information is also going to be considered before the information is considered as a trade secret the extent of the ease are difficult with the which information could be acquired or duplicated by the other if information is easy to acquire or duplicate it is less likely to qualify a as a trade secret similarly if the information is readily ascertainable from observation or can be easily reproduced it is less likely to be a trade secret on the other hand if it can be reverse engineered only with significant expenditures of time effort and money the product may retain its status as a trade secret so in this factor what exactly they are going to look into how the how easily trade secret can be copied for example a potter making several types of pots with different designs if another potter comes uh, comes there and stands for 10 minutes or 20 minutes he can observe the procedure and he can copy it 
so this kind of information will be very feeble to consider as a trade secret and also how much time they take to re-engineer the finished product if somebody is very easily re uh, reverse engineering the finished pro finished product then that company's trade secret cannot be considered as strong so these are the key factors to determine trade secret status thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe